If you like Taste Test and you want to keep the music digestion sessions going every week and get some exclusive bonus content, stick around afterwards for details. But first, let's start the show. Have a taste. You are now in the zone. Zone, zone, the zone with the taste, taste test live. Hey, what's jazzing? It's time for Taste Test Live. I am Damian Lamar, producer and host of Taste Test that airs on WJCT 89.9. And WJCT is North Florida's NPR station. My radio show is a one-hour, twice-weekly music program. It airs on Saturdays and Tuesday nights at 11 o'clock, 8 Pacific. We're back again for some exclusive interviews, music news, and laughs. Joining me in Studio One are my Taste Test Live co-hosts, Blue Francois and MJ Baker. Woohoo! All right. Hello. Somebody doing the most. (laughs) (laughs) We here. (laughs) Blue, can you take a quick moment and tell our first time listeners what the podcast is all about? On Taste Test Live, you'll hear what we call music digestion sessions, where we discuss what's happening in the entertainment industry. Our weekly podcast also features exclusive artist interviews and music you will never hear anywhere else. I'm just playing. Never? Probably. Probably. <laughs> Knock on wood. Probably. probably. <laughs> we can say probably. I was going to say that probably. Probably. Oh, I hate probably. When people spell. Oh my gosh. <laughs> If you are interested or know someone who might want to promote an upcoming single, new album, concert, or just drop by to share their newest project, get in touch with us. You can do that by heading over to our website at tastetest.live. Head over to our contact page and complete the form to be a guest on the show. Yeah, yeah. So Mm. right now, we're going to jump to our first interview of the week. Uh, We're excited to welcome our guest, Taryn Warwood, also known as Love Reigns to Taste Test Live. Welcome. Hey, y'all. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Before we begin, I'd like closest to... closest homies. Oh, oh, really? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Before I before we let everybody know how your, this is your closest homie, I'd like to take a quick moment. And, oh, my bad. And uh, brief our first time <laughs> listeners or anybody for that matter who doesn't know who Love Reigns is. Born and raised in Miami, Florida, Taryn Love Reigns Warwood is a proud product of the Ebony Village School of Dania, Florida. Curated by the Dr. Marita Green and late Dr. Josephine Ivey, the Ebony Village School would prove to be the purposeful foundation of Love Rain's career as a performing artist, a host, entrepreneur, community advocate, curator, mentor, and activist. Along with the direction of her mother, retired teacher Sharon Warwood, Drs. Green and Ivy saw a spark in Taryn that would lead her to develop a deep love for poetry. Love Rain's passion for people and words has afforded her opportunities to perform and advocate on the hills of Washington, D.C., Canada, and educational institutions from elementary to university levels. Love Rain's is truly in a lane of her own and isn't afraid to create another one if she has to. Thanks, Mom. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Mama Sharon. (laughs) Yeah, thank you. Welcome again. No problem. Thank you. We finally got you in the hot seat. Finally. 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 Oh, man, I'm nervous, though. So this is officially National Poetry Month. Yes. And earlier this month, we had the privilege of sitting down with Ebony Payne English, who is also a poet. Yes. But you're a poet in your own right, and you're doing some amazing things mm-hmm. in Jacksonville. Yeah. Trying um, to, at least. Oh, no. You're doing it. You're doing it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, Master Yoda says, do or do not. That's true. There That's is true. no try. There is no try. That's right. So you're going to do it, or you're or not. you're not going to. That's right. Mm. So you're doing it. I appreciate it. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I see you. Well. <laughs> doing it. Doing it. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So um, uh, do kindly update uh, us and tell us what's been going on in your world. Oh, man. So, uh, yeah, so it's National Poetry Month. At the end of the month, um, myself, Ebony Payne English, Kia Flo, and Matthew Cuban Hernandez will be um, honored um, at the closing ceremonies for National Poetry Month, hosted by Al Letson. Um, I just found out that Universal Green will be there performing, so that's going to be awesome. Um, And it's just going to be, it's really, honestly, it's going to be kind of like a family reunion, you Mm -hmm. know, so it's going to be really 
really cool. Um, other than that, we have the Cypher, you know, that I host every Thursday. Uh, and this year actually made the Cypher the longest running open mic ever in Jacksonville history. So Wow. That's really? really cool. So how many years yeah. has it been running? This is year 11 for us. Mm, wow. Year 11 for us. And, um, yeah, I don't, you know, I don't see any signs of stopping. Right. So as long as people keep coming, we're going to keep delivering a show. Okay. So doing that. And then I also started uh, The Closet, which is a, a monthly event for the the mature LGBTQ plus crowd. Um, you know, because I figure we need to do, we need more spaces for LGBT people as well. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I got tired of looking for those places and, and decided to just create one. That's great. So, so that's when cool. it's not when it's not available and it's not there, then I create it. You create it. Yeah. <laughs> it's because you're a creator. Yeah, you can't help it. I love it. I love that's it. That's awesome. Okay. Yep. All right. So, um, your involvement in poetry. I mean, obviously, when you read your bio, your your parents were directly responsible for why you love poetry, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Man, my mom is. Uh, it's all you know. I, I attribute it all to her. I mean, um, you know, even from from attending Ebony Village all the way up to now, um, my mom has been my greatest fan and, and biggest supporter in everything that I do so mm-hmm. you know um Ebony Village started us out, you know, literally at five, standing us on tables, taking us to community centers, performing for people. Wow. And I've been doing it ever since. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So Ebony Village. Okay. So tell me, like, paint a picture for people who have no idea what Ebony Village is. What is it like growing up or going to school at Ebony Village? So uh, the Ebony Village was started by uh, doctors Marita Green and Josephine, I- um, Josephine Ivy. Uh, Josephine, Dr. Josephine Ivy actually passed away a few years ago. Um, but I've been able to keep in contact with uh, with Dr. Green. And if you can just literally, uh, you know, imagine a house with 30 African-American children growing up, uh, going to school together from age five to about 13, um, coming in every morning. Our entry into school was either we had to recite a poem or a quote. Oh, wow. That's how we entered into school. Nice. And we would, so we would say things like, um, you know, uh, Bethune, um, Mary McLeod Bethune, Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune's Last Will and Testament, um, Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream. We mm-hmm. would have to recite those things to enter into school every day. Mm-hmm. Wow. And then we would end it by saying, my name is Taryn Warwood and I have a great mind. Oh. So how beautiful is that? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I love it's, it. It's unfortunate, you know, that school, that, that school doesn't exist anymore, but um, it really, it definitely did set the foundation for uh, everything that I'm, I'm doing now. And I've, I've been able to keep in contact with Dr. Green and just tell her. I remember the first time I talked to her and probably since I was like 13, I talked to her about a year ago mm-hmm. and I just cried. <laughs> I just cried talking to her. Cause just she happy said, tears, of course. Yeah, of course, yeah. man, because she was just, you know, to be able to tell her everything that I'm doing and to say, you're the reason I'm doing it. Yeah. You know, and, and I didn't have that opportunity with Dr. Ivy, but, you know, so it's just been... Um, you know that was that's that was the Ebony Village School. It was literally about thirty kids. Um, they made us. They made us do everything. Uh, they even gave us whoopings. <laughs> so Old fashioned. Day, okay. We need it. Yeah. Was it a belt or a paddle? Or? Uh, a paddle. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> that covered your whole behind. Yep. <laughs> and then you knew when you were going in the bathroom with Dr. Ivy or Miss Green or Dr. Green, you knew what time it was. Wow. Wow. That's, <laughs> so, that's what's up. Yeah. So okay. Let's just dive more into poetry, your love for poetry. So Ebony Village was obviously a place. Was it your mom that that instilled the love for poetry or more? You actually got it from Ebony Village. Um, So it was a little bit of both. I mean, my mom, it was definitely Ebony Village, but my mom also had a um, a really close teacher friend of hers uh, by the name of um, Jerilee McLehorn. And Miss Mac was what we called her. Um, Miss Mac would come to our house and she would sit me down and just read stories to me. And it was literally like... I was her audience and she would read these stories to me as if I was like a, an, an audience full of people, wow. you know, so she all of the, the dramatics the, the, yeah, and everything, huh? everything, she just, she put it all in, you know, into that performance. And, um, I was always inspired by that. So I don't know, maybe it was just something that was just meant for me. I don't know, but I was always around it. So when you, when you recite your poetry, um, is it a lot by memory or do you actually like 
literally handwrite a lot of your material. Um, I, um, I, and then before, I, and this is a two part question. Okay. When I see a lot of poets in um, in a lot of ciphers, and some of them have, you know, the the ledgers, the books. I forget what you call the black and white books. What do you call those? The uh, composition yes, books. Yes, the composition mm-hmm. books. I see people with the composition books, but then I also see people literally just kind of like, it appears that they're freestyling, but they've learned the poetry. What's your what's your style? Um, so my style, it depends. I mean, it really depends on how I'm feeling, honestly. I mean, I, I try to memorize my poems. The, the I'm not going to say it's unfortunate, but the, the downside to hosting a weekly event and hosting and curating a lot of events I don't have the time to memorize a lot of poems I don't have the time to uh, to really write even um, so the downside to that is is that I don't perform as much as uh, I used to uh, okay. um, but now I'm, I'm starting to get back into that uh, into performing and, and really getting out there and, and kind of doing a mixture of both the hosting and the performing but for the most part you know, especially at the cipher, um, it's usually something that I, I I just wrote, maybe like in the car. Oh, before. so it's super fresh. Super fresh, yeah. you know, and I like to test it out and and share it with people. So there's a lot of poems that um, I've written that I haven't shared, you know. So mm-hmm. it's really an opportunity now to um, to do that. Or uh, write a book. Or right, yes, exactly. I actually wrote a book. I wrote a book this year for oh, the you first did. time, okay. yeah, uh, which was long overdue. Um, so. You know, now that I have a little bit of free time, I'm working on book two. So nice. Yeah. So is your is your first publication? Is it available for sale? Yeah, it's available yeah. on Amazon. Um, really? And if you look up Love Reigns, uh, it's called Love Reigns Book One Heal. So it's called Heal, and it's all about. I was I was a little nervous about it um, because I was really healing. You know, putting that out there, um, but I needed to. I needed to get it out. So it, it, it there was a lot of vulnerability. You, a you, lot, you shared, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> a okay. lot. I actually got a call from my aunt um, when she first found out about it. She ordered two copies for one for herself and one for her friend, and she sent me a text with a bunch of like crying emojis. And she's like, they call me TT, so she's like, TT, I had no idea, yeah. you know. And she's like, you know, get that healing girl, and that's what that's how she talks. So mm-hmm. okay. You know. okay. It was needed. Yeah. So I, I find too, as an artist, sometimes you you uh, you let things go. And you or like some some people right. feel like, okay, I got to put this album out. They'll put the album out, and the healing begins, and then they move on to the next thing. Yeah. Right. So I'm looking forward to ex- experiencing that portion of your uh, revelation. Me too. And uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and also just to to carrying on, you know, the the next book. Yeah. yeah for yeah. sure. For sure. Book two will be um, love. So we got heal and then love. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. A yeah. series. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's super cool. So now, along with the cipher, you know, where do you all see that going beyond? Is there a vision beyond just the open mic on Thursdays? Yeah, it is actually. So we've um, started the cipher elite tour which actually will be in in Gainesville this Saturday. So that'll be technically our first out-of-town show. Mm -hmm. Um, So the hope is to basically take what we create at the Cypher every Thursday and just take it on tour, take it to different places. So um, that's what we're doing. And, And the hope is, is that, you know, along the way in different places that we go artists that have come you know have either featured at the cypher or performed at the cypher will join the right. tour mm-hmm. and we just take that that show on the road and keep going and just keep going that's joe yeah i want to tell y'all a funny story about oh, oh man uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm scared. Uh, nine years. <laughs> no, no, it's actually good. Nine years ago, I met Seven, the poet, and we had this stupid, crazy notion to start a band. <laughs> And I was like, Seven, where can we gig at? Like, who gonna wanna? He said, ain't, ain't anybody who knows Seven. Seven is who's very ambitious, and when he was just like, just put the gigs blue, and I'm I'm a performing and and. and 
kill it. So anyway, uh, I had reached, reached out to Love Reigns. I don't know if she remembers this, but I reached out to Love Reigns. I said, hey, we got our own band. You know, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. I'm going to bring all these people out. We did not have one practice. <laughs> show. We freestyled. I was so... But it's like, it actually was a good show. Yeah, I remember was, that. It was, it was a good actually, show. It was fun. I had reached out to a guitar player that I had met maybe a week before. And Seven had all these poems. And then we had Chris Stafford on bass. I mean, we had like a nice little band. But it was just like... When we got there, all of us kind of realized, like, we really not ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> like, we were so hyped. And we, I made the flyer. I took pictures. I, had wow. bought, I went to the thrift yeah. store and went shopping <laughs> for this thing. So I changed every set. <laughs> and, I, and in my mind, the whole time, I said, I know Terry ain't going to never talk to me again. <laughs> but, but anyway, I was saying all that to say, to set this question up. Um, Love Reigns had actually been very pivotal in, like, doing shows like My House of Soul and so what I would do is piggyback off her show so like she would set me up where okay hey I'm bringing down the artist and she was, and, and like they was going to be performing at the thing and she had something she has a talk game like she's she's smooth she would get <laughs> she, these she people like she's smooth. would travel around the world <laughs> in more ways than one without she would get major people to travel all the way to Jacksonville on their dime <laughs> and she'll say, Hey, they're gonna buy your CDs and I and I used to be like, Wow. So wait, then, wait, wait, wait. So so you're like a woman of influence, like great she influence. Is. You know what's funny? It's I, I was actually telling this to somebody. I don't know I mean I, I honestly and I'm and I gotta stop. I, I actually read this quote. Uh, mm-hmm. by Golda Meir that said stop being so humble you're not that great <laughs> yeah whoa so <laughs> I'm working on that right so I I don't know what it is but literally I would reach out to people and I would get a response you know um, and it was fairly easy like when we brought the when I brought the Floases down here <laughs> I literally inboxed her and we set it up come and we, on <laughs> it was wait like, a minute you you brought the Floases to Jacksonville yeah yeah she came and, down here on just on an inbox it's yeah. not just that. Yeah. It's so <clears throat> Kevin Sandbloom. Abyss. Yes. Yeah. I mean, Taking to Vegas. Um, Taking the yeah. Do you Taking still have this kind of influence still? I, yeah, I do. She, well, yes, they made yeah. you now. I mean, yeah, I was I can't afford them now. But <laughs> I wish I could. Listen, right. but what's funny is like Taking to Vegas came down here twice, man. Yes, and I, twice. I, I, I thrive off of that because I definitely can't afford them now. But when they came before, it was just like really cool because what it is is like I love I love art. I love right. music. I love all genres, right? So what when we created the cipher and artistry and all these different shows, the old, the whole idea was to just have all of these genres under one roof. Mm-hmm. Just celebrating each other and, mm-hmm. and, and really creating art. And that's what the cipher is. So being able to reach out to all of these different artists, I, I find these artists and I'm like, man, these this is these people are dope you know right. people like Danny Cassette and all these people that nobody knows about right. I'm like why don't you know about them okay so I'm gonna bring them here you know you brought and Danny Cassette here too Danny yeah. Cassette has been here several yeah, times several times <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah. Taking the Bankers has been twice Danny Cassette George no, Me comes Tank all the time they've been here more than twice they've been here uh, well, they three, at well, least three times they did another show uh, yeah they, when they did it they first ma- came for when Ill Clinton brought them down right and then from there I brought them down two more times right cause they stay with me yeah, the, um, one of those. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Tank and the Banger State with you. Yeah. yeah, she's the homie. She's both of our yeah. friends. Like we talk to, <laughs> like, like we. No I mean, I can't get her on the phone now. All right, I <laughs> used to, but it's not not because she doesn't want to talk to me. Right, it's just they're busy, man. She's like, so busy, yeah. but yeah. when they were they were just here, running her, and, um, yeah, running running game for her now. Exactly. Right. When they were right. just in St. Augustine, it was called, it was just like a reunion. You know what I mean? And and uh, being able to see them because it's been years. You know, and, and just just to see them rise is just like awesome. And it's so cool because even when. Like, like, you know, even when they say something to you on on Facebook, if it's just an inbox, it's like, oh, my God, you know, yeah. Yeah. you know, they they're not too big. It's like, you know, we still we're still we still love you guys. And yeah. so that's what's cool. Yeah. But wow. Yeah. I'm, I'm over. I'm just. I'm overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should have you book all of the guests for Taste Test Live. Right. Uh, I mean, like, how much? We can discuss listen. your fee and everything later. But, she, but listen, this one, is yeah, funny, and man. she's a, an amazing entrepreneur as well. You know, what I'm saying she and I talk a lot about <laughs> business and being a business, being business women, and you know, and MJ's just, my sounding board a lot. <laughs> 
She's mine too. <laughs> so you ha- you do have a role and a purpose. I told you, MJ. <laughs> it's like you can't tear it out. Guess what? So and so did. I be cussing tearing out all the time, but we love we still love each other. Yeah, yeah. that makes for the the, the lasting fridge. Yeah, yeah. You know? this, this is true. They yeah. they stand the test of time. Yep. We try to meet once a month for brunch, and I, it's been a couple download. Months, so. yeah. yeah, and she's so modest though. Like your energy is just so mm-hmm. modest. Like yeah, I did that. Uh huh. <laughs> right. <laughs> I just you know what I what I realized, and I realized this a long time ago that it's not about me. You know what I mean? It's not. Um, you know, actually, when I first started performing. I went by. I went through these whole series of changes out of names. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> but I <laughs> was. I, I at first I was Love Rain. Love Rain. And then there was no, no, else. no. First I was Rain. Yeah, you was Rain. I was then Rain was the lady, poet. Remember and then there was somebody else named, named Rain. Love Rain. Remember? Yeah. yeah. And so I, I said, okay, and well, I don't want to disrespect name. her. Yeah. So I changed my name to Rain the unpoet. Unpoet. I remember. People got <laughs> mad at me for the saying unpoet. the unpoet, the right? Because yeah. I was trying to be different. That's right? kind of. So I, mean, so I was Rain the Unpoet. Unpoet yeah, then I, I went that. from Rain the Unpoet to the artist formerly Rain, known yeah, as Rain that. the Unpoet. Oh my gosh. You just want to give up Rain. You didn't want to give that up. I didn't want to give it up. Yeah. And then I went, then, then something hit me. And I, I really, I was sat down one day and I was like, man, what is it? What is it that, not not that I didn't want to go by Taryn, right? I, I love the fact that I'm literally the only Taryn Warwood in the world. Love that. But um, I said, okay, well, what is it that, that I truly want to show and give off to people? And it was the, the thing that kept coming back was love. So love reigns. And it's just kind of stuck. She gives a lot of love. Then. It's interesting. I'm yeah. glad that came up because that was going to be my, my next question. Yeah. Oh, how so, it came yeah. up. <laughs> um, it, it's naturally. It just yeah. came out naturally. That's great. That's yeah. Great. Yeah. That's really Favorite to a fault sometimes, I, and I, I can admit that. I mean, I um, uh, with the the modesty and the um, mm. I'm very human, you know what I mean, and I mess up just like everybody else. And um, that's a good feeling, though, isn't it? It really is, <laughs> but it also is a good feeling to say to admit, "Hey, I messed up." Yep. Right. right. And yeah. they think that I checks think that the that ego that's real a, quick. Exactly, and it yeah. also checks the ego for other people right. as well because it's just like, "Hey, I." Don't don't look at me and don't put me on this pedestal. Right, right. You I'm know human what I'm too. Yeah. I'm human. I'm gonna yeah. mess up. Like I, I'm not. I promise you, I will mess up. That's right. what it is. You yeah. know what I mean. But that, that's all a part of life. It's yeah. a part of growing. It's a part of. Um, nobody has a playbook for yeah. for what life is supposed to be. So I thought they did though. Some, <laughs> some people act like they do. They act like they do. They like really I, don't, do. I don't have nothing figured out. I just turned 36 and I don't have nothing figured out. Nothing. <laughs> It, it, it becomes it becomes clearer, but then again, as as society changes, it yep. just gets mucky. Exactly. If that's the word. What is it? Is that a word? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It just it just it just gets a little gets a little cloudy. As and you society have to change changes. with it. Absolutely. You know what I mean. You Absolutely. have to change with it. You have to look at things as experiences to help you grow. You know yeah. what I mean. Mm-hmm. And and you know my mom will be seventy this year, and she was saying that you know I'm still learning. I'm Absolutely. still learning. So why, you know, if she's still learning at 70, who am I to think that I, lo- I know anything at 36? Right. right. Yeah, that's a, the, the quote <laughs> is that the wise man knows that he knows nothing at exactly. all. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. That's, that's a true wise man. I have a line in a poem that says, we are the all-knowing knowers of nothing. Mm. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that. I like. We that. are, the and I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that nothing. and quote you. I have, a, <laughs> I have a whole like um, notepad of like these quotes. And awesome. You go on going with all these greats, you know. Take it. It's like we are the all-knowing knowers of nothing. The in search of something, somethings, tellers of life stories. That's what we are. Mm. She's giving me poetry before I could even ask for it. <laughs> right. Like you got. I got. Yeah. You uh, got one more. Bright blue. Favorite. Well. Favorite features that you ever had all Ooh. time. My two, my my two is Kenya Martin. Wait, wait, what? Oh, Ken J Martin. Ken J Martin. He'll actually be back here uh, for the closet next that, Saturday. Oh, he good. put yeah. on. Uh, anyway, Ken J. Of course, Kevin Sandbloom. Yeah. That hey anybody yeah, heard heard of, you ever heard of Kevin Sandbloom? I haven't. No. Oh, he's amazing. Yeah, oh, he's awesome. You got to listen to his version of uh, Sade's Yeah. Is it a crime? She brought him down. He flew from California, and I remember when he came here, I was like, Hey, I'm doing a show at Indo Exo. Um, you know, I'll pay you to do the show if you're already gonna be at thing. Because I think she he was gonna sell his CDs at his show. Mm-hmm. And so the deal we worked out was, I said, hey, well, I ch- I'll, ch- I'll pay you 125 to do a 30-minute set. Jill Scott, 
uh, was in town that same weekend, her band members came to the show and we had them and it was that's when the cast first the cast downstairs did their first show with me at uh Indo Exo. Oh, awesome. And it was an amazing night. So I was like so so, so from there on I was just saying my Jesus is <laughs> oh my god I worship favorite. you oh, wait, <laughs> so, yeah, favorite, show. favorite shows favorite oh man favorite, favorite features. features yeah you can give me three MJ Baker. Yeah, I was gonna oh, say, you don't say, say that. that. <laughs> you don't say that no, just seriously. because I'm sitting here. No, you no, I'm not. That's not the only reason I'm saying that. And actually, I still want to do that show, uh, the show that with Julie Durden, you and Julie oh, doing like yeah. an unplug, mm-hmm. unplug set. So we should do that. Oh, uh, but MJ Baker, of course, Tank and the Bangers. Uh, yeah. Danny Cassette puts on an amazing live show. Wow. Um, uh, Georgia Me, of course, mm. all the time. I miss that mm-hmm. show. Bro. Um, Abyss Sorry. Graham. Yeah, Abyss, Abyss yeah. is amazing. Um, oh man, we've had so many, so many. Mark Marcel puts on an awesome oh, show. Uh, you know Mark Marcel, he's a poet. Mm-hmm. Sonny Patterson. Oh, <sighs> Sonny Patterson puts on an amazing. Like so, those are some of my favorite features. Um, it's every show is 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 a favorite. You know what I mean? And every show right. is is really cool. Um, so here's a quick plug. This Thursday, I think is going to be a really, really, really dope show, which is Marquita Williams. So if oh, you don't oh, know who yeah. that name is. Awesome. Oh my gosh! Y'all Eagles. need to know. Need yeah. to know who she is, cause yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. She's right. it. Dope. Well, we gotta we gotta wrap this interview up, and I just I feel like I have to have you back <laughs> because this is so yeah. so good. Um, will you be willing to give us a little of taste of what's to come on April twenty seventh in Hemming Park at the mm. uh, Jack's Poetry Fest party in the park with Al Letson? Yeah, 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 for sure. Let's see. Um. Uh, let's see. We are the writers of words, the singers of song, the artists of art, the composers of music, the dancers of freedom. We are the creators. Actually, no, I don't want to do that. Can I do another one? Yeah, sure. Hold on. <laughs> let me let me get my let me get my video ready. There's not really a good breaking point for that poem to actually yeah, stop. So uh, let's see. Y'all ready? Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> I dream in supernatural earth tones of prophets gone before me, retracing their steps as if the earth spoke to me, spoken through me are the whispers of Maya. Daughter, live your life. Take this universe and change it. Rearrange it and make it better than it is because it's better than it is. More than writing, it's what you give. More than poetry, this is what you live. So allow every word you speak to be a reflection of what love reigns is because what love reigns is, is what Taryn was born to be. That's wow. That's, That's, That's what I'm talking about. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank now, you. I want to come la- back. I got sure. one last request. Yes. Tell everybody how they can find you on social media. You got a website. Uh, I do. Actually, you can check yeah. out uh, IamLoveRains.com. Um, check me out on Facebook. Facebook's a hater, so I've, I've maxed <laughs> out on my friends on Facebook on my Love Reigns page. But if we're, like, close, you can join. You can, you can add my Taryn page. Um, but Love Reigns, I am Love Reigns everywhere. Um, on Instagram, on Twitter, uh, IamLoveRains.com. And reigns for everybody that doesn't know is spelled R E I G N S. Yeah. So I A M L O V E R E I G N S. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Thank you so no much. No problem. This Yay. was fun. It was. It this was. was fun. Thank you so much. I, I just I, I want to just say thank you. No problem. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, really appreciate it. We're gonna take a short break and we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Taste Test Live. I'm Damian Lamar. MJ Baker. I think people already know that, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. And joining us in Studio One is my guest today, Jonathan Baptiste and Pastor Philip Rawls. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Jonathan Baptiste is a bassist, composer, and a native of Orlando, Florida. Raised in church, his roots are predominantly in gospel. He attended Polk State College Music Program, where he received a Marie Ann Golden and the Polk County Cultural Arts Scholarship. Jonathan was a recipient of the American Music Scholarship and Weinstein Memorial Scholarship in leadership at the University of North Florida. He went on to receive the Most Outstanding Musician of the Year Award at UNF School of Music, and in 2018, North Florida Jazz Association Jazz Scholarship recipient. Jonathan's also a teacher 
at Jacksonville Arts and Music School, and he's a freelance musician and has played with the likes of the two-time Grammy Award-winning saxophonist Tevon Pennycott, Sophia Kesnovich, Terry Doc Handy, Daniel D., Marcus Prinup, Jameson Ross, Allison Williams, John Lumpkin, and international gospel recording artist Lisa McClendon, amongst others. Recently, Jonathan received a great honor by being chosen as the legendary jazz trombonist Teddy Adams, Art Blakely's Jazz Messengers, as a future of jazz recipient and has been recognized for their work in jazz. He and other recipients have been honored at the Savannah Heritage Festival in 27, 2017 and 2019. And Jonathan has also played with his band, The Urban Intellectuals, at the 2018 Jacksonville Jazz Festival. Welcome to Taste Test Live. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. <laughs> what a list of accomplishments. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So give me a little bit of background outside of uh, the University of Florida. How did you get started as a jazz musician? Like, what made you want to do jazz? Um, I grew up in, like, playing in church and stuff. And um, I knew that I wanted to do music and wanted to pursue a higher uh, level of music. So I decided to learn about this music that uh, is not really talked about. Mm -hmm. A lot of people shy away from it, but it's music that's very important to the black community and very important um, to American history, too. Okay. And uh, was that in elementary? I mean, like, when did you realize that, hey, I'm really a jazz musician? Oh, actually, it was in college. Really? Okay. Yeah. All right. So you had, did you have any type of formal training in, in high school or, or elementary school at all? No. Wow. Wow. Okay. All right. That's that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So um, having worked with a a, a, a a myriad of different musicians, what has your experience been like? I mean, do you like to do a lot of touring? Do you stay here locally in Jacksonville? What What's that like? Um, it's some, it's, I deal with a lot of touring sometimes, but um, because I'm in school, mm -hmm. I uh, like deny a lot of offers and um, it's a little hard. I get mm -hmm. some really cool offers, but yeah, yeah. I know that school is important. So. Mm -hmm. um, but dealing with like the actual musicians, it's been really great. I was thrown into the fire like as soon as I got to Jacksonville, so it was really cool just to see, um, just to see everyone. Like you, you, you start working with these people, and they expect a high level. Yeah, and, off the top. Yeah, yeah. Like if you mess up, that's it. Wow. And it's been, uh, I've been very blessed just to be able to work with all these people. And stuff. Mm -hmm. Did you have any favorite performers? I don't want to put you on the spot, but um, like, has there been a favorite moment where you're on stage and you're like, I feel like I'm, ex I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to do? Honestly, that's, uh, this is a generic answer, but it's really true. Every time I play with someone new, it's always a new experience, and I'm really happy to have those experiences. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. I did um, um, part of the Jag Jacksonville Jazz Festival last year. I saw the in Urban Intellectuals, and I believe you reached out, but uh, yeah, I was I not prepared <laughs> at the time. So, you know, preparation, of course, uh, I forget the quote, but if you don't if you don't prepare, you, you, you miss opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I missed the opportunity to, to interview you right when you were hot, fresh, right in 2018. So I appreciate you reaching out to me specifically because what this is Jazz Appreciation Month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, tell me a little bit more about your background. What was it like growing up? Where did you grow up? Um, in Orlando. Orlando, Florida. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I grew up in a, in a gospel church, and I just grew up. There's one church in, the, um, in my neighborhood, and everybody went to that church. And um, it was really cool because the older musicians, like, really took us under their wing, mm -hmm. and they really just taught us um, how to play pretty much. So... That's awesome. So you did you play more than one specific instrument? Um, I dabbled in other stuff, but I kind of just stuck with the bass. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
All right. So you had there's a, a, a specific song that that was written. Um, you obviously Pastor Philip Rawls is going to uh, talk a little bit about it. I, we have an event coming up on Friday. Yes. Um, called Jazz in the Garden. Um, this week is Passion Week, Holy Week, what we consider um, traditionally to be a time where we celebrate uh, the death and burial resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so um, I thought to do something, put a spin on it. Generally in our tradition on Friday night, we usually have seven preachers that get up and talk about the last seven sayings of the cross. And I thought, why not have a, a different spin on it this year where we can integrate music within the theme? And so we all know about Jazz in the Garden down south in right. South right. Florida. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I thought about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And I said, well, why don't we put a spin on that and say Jazz in the Garden? And I asked Jonathan, who is one of our members, um, if he could write something uh, that would go along with this. And so we had this conversation back in November. And um, after we we talked about it, he said, yeah, I can come up with something. And he wrote a whole entire suite um, that goes along with it. And um, so we're excited about it. It's it's kind of merging two worlds together and being doing something different that most churches would not do. Um, Mm -hmm. But we're excited about it. It's been a lot of buzz going around about it. And um, if you've ever seen Jonathan, and his band in operation before. They are incredible. They are amazing. And um, so I'm excited about what he's going to present on Friday night um, Mm -hmm. with what he has written for the event. Okay. And and pardon my my horrible introduction of you, Pastor Rawls. Tell me a little bit about you and um, your 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 fellowship, the church that you 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 pastor. So um, I'm Pastor Philip Rawls <laughs> um, of the Freedom Church of Jacksonville um, over in Arlington, right off of Arlington Expressway, and um, started the church about nine years ago. We're well, coming up on nine years ago, and um, just a. a, a very different kind of church, radical kind of church, uh, young church. Mm -hmm. And um, Jonathan is one of our, he uh, was one of our musicians, but he's also one of our members. He actually is a member of the church. And um, so, yeah, that's, that's, we we try to do different things that will appeal to different kinds of people, not just one type of person. Mm -hmm. And this event is one of those things. It sounds like it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a good Friday celebration. Yes. And this particular suite, Jonathan, is, uh, is about Jesus's uh, walk walk through Gethsemane, his, um, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, hit the suffering. And when he knew that he needed to go to the cross and die, mm-hmm. um, that he didn't basically didn't want to take this cup. Yes. He said, take this cup from me. Cause it's, it's obviously too great to bear. How does that parlay in with the suite? Like, how did you write it? What was that like? So I really had to, uh, study the scriptures and, um, I remember ask when he came to me about it. I was like, "Send me all the scriptures, uh, scriptures, and the um, anything that you can to help me study." Mm-hmm. And because I just wanted to get a clear understanding of it, and then uh, so that when I'm writing something, it will uh, make sense. Right. And um, so it's a four part suite. So there's four pieces to it. Um, the first one is rumination which is Jesus Jesus and his disciples walk through the Mountain of Olives, and that's considered a very beautiful place. So um, the first one is going to be very, um, very, like, lush, and um, but like a sense of going somewhere. Mm-hmm. And um, the next one is sorrow, when he's dealing with that, um, all of that... Um, it's literally the weight of the world yeah. on him. So uh, that one's going to be a lot darker tone. And um, it's real um, intense swing, like think John Coltrane, Love Supreme. Uh, yeah. um, which, which is one of my favorite albums. I mean, I think that's one of the greatest jazz albums on the, on the yes, planet, personally. Mine too. Yeah. Um, and the next one is Temptation, where his disciples were having... Uh, they were having difficulty uh, staying awake. Yes. So <laughs> during that, his prayer, he's like, you yeah. know, can you just pray with me? Yeah. For and, Can you do it? Do it for one hour. <laughs> yeah. And the last one is called bold, which is 
a foreshadowing of what's to come. He knows he's about to get arrested. Mm -hmm. So um, it's kind of almost bittersweet. But I still, um, one of the things I really want to stick to with this suite was um, make sure I just stick to my roots of the gospel. Um, Gospel music, especially... um, uh, black music and that's the that's the thing that uh John Coltrane was really into. So he stuck he just stuck with what he knew when he wrote uh A Love Supreme. It was because um he you can hear some of that stuff like in the church yeah. when he's like doing the hollers and stuff on his horn. He's just emulating what he hears in the church. Mm-hmm. So um that's what I was trying to do when I wrote it. So is this all instrumentation? Is are there any lyrics that were written? Um my particular part is just instrumentation, mm-hmm. um, but during that night, we also have poets. Uh, oh, we nice. have Aaron Kendrick doing a live painting. Oh, of this week. great. Nice. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's going to be, and we have a singer, Tori Peoples. Yeah, she's uh, awesome. Yeah, she's going to be singing one of her originals that mm-hmm. ties in really well with the whole suite. So, it sounds amazing. It doesn't sounds like it? a great yeah. show. I mean, not a great show. Yeah, but. performance. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I I I, I have um, I always find it interesting when there's a musician and uh, to get a little bit more contextualization of mm-hmm. of what goes into comp- composing an mm-hmm. actual piece and then you know using the the Gethsemane um, just all of the different events that actually took place in that garden mm-hmm. and translating that into a, a musical composition that's that's to be admired I I yeah. unfortunately cannot attend and I'm like Ugh. so is there is there going to be, are you going to be videotaping this? Will there be a, a, any live streaming? Can people see it afterwards? Yeah. Uh, Pastor? <laughs> <laughs> um, I do know that Jonathan is recording it, correct? And yes. you're going to be putting on oh, okay. iTunes. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. nice. So it's going to be a gonna live say, recording. Are you going to make yeah. this, you know, your own thing? That's fantastic. Yeah, that's then I can get an autograph copy. So what are you going to, yeah, what is the title going to be? Guess at me. Nice. Okay. Your first is this your first original composition? Um, no, I I've written a lot. This would be my first uh, EP, I guess. Mm-hmm. Oh, so. nice. I will be more than happy to support you any Me way too. I can because As I well. think this is wonderful. Um, yeah. And you know, like Pastor Raw said, it's I don't it hasn't been done before. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, all the times of growing up in church, we both grew up in church. Right. You know, all the programs. <laughs> The, the Sunday program, the Friday night service, you know, the watch night service, whatever. I don't know of any uh, musicians that actually took out this much time to compose something around um, uh, an Easter themed. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't really Easter, but, but just about the 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 last real time that Jesus spent praying before he really was on the cross and he was praying. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just I, I'm so excited about it. Yeah. I really am. So, uh, yeah, I cannot wait to hear it. Um, any other final words? I mean, do you want to take a quick moment and tell everybody how they can find you on social media? Um, so you can find me at uh, JJ Baptiste Music, or you can go to my website, JonathanBaptiste.com, to see any updates. Um, I have some music up there and um, a lot of different stuff and different projects that I'm doing. Uh, the Jonathan Baptiste and the Urban Intellectuals. Um, we're going to be coming out with some new stuff, so stay tuned. Yeah. yeah. Are you guys playing at all this jazz festival? No. Um, you can only do it every other year. Ah, uh, so. did not know that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, but you, I'm sure you have a, f- a, c- a couple performances during that time in and around uh, Jacksonville. Yeah. Okay. Uh, awesome. All right. Yeah. So, you, will your show dates be on your website? Yes. Okay. Great. Great. Um, Pastor Pastor Rawls, please take a quick moment and tell everybody about your congregation. Those individuals that are listening that are saying oh I gotta go how can they find your church where are you located um, absolutely yeah our church is uh, located 5454 Arlington Expressway um, right in right in in the Arlington area. Um, It starts at 8 p.m. on Friday night. It is a free event, so everyone is welcome. We do ask to leave the kitties at home, please. (laughs) Get you a babysitter. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Um, And it's my understanding you actually brought some music you're going to play? I'm going to play a solo rendition of Amazing Grace. Excellent. All right. So we're going to take a short break while Jonathan sets up for that, and we'll be right right back here on Taste Test Live.
If you like what you heard today, please follow us on social media on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Taste Test Radio. We also have a website, www.tastetest.live, where you can hear and find all of our old episodes and guest interviews. Taste Test Live is a fully syndicated podcast and is on podcast services such as Apple, Google, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, CastBox, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Taste Test Live is supported by listeners like you. If you enjoy the show and want to make sure I can keep making it at this rate, then head over to tastetest.live and click the button that says Patreon. There you can learn how you can help and get some perks for your support. If you're unable to support Taste Test Live financially, then share the show. Tell your friends about it and subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast service. I really enjoy sharing this podcast with you and producing it every week. Thank you so much for listening.